I don't know that it would change anything really. All right, uh, so I'm gonna hop right back into into a tier two. Let's do let's do not that guy again. We just did it. Let's do the tier two version, which is way harder. And we're gonna pop an hour long potion this time. We're gonna load that formation in. No, uh, well, we'll get everybody loaded there. Levels and people. And the groove. And the groove. Trying to get through this quickly. 450 areas. I mean, we, we've definitely got the power. I don't know if it's the power in this formation. Uh, but we definitely have power if we need it. And we can add to the formation. Uh, once again, I am gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna grow my. Effectively, Swamp Spectacular. Old school Swamp, swamp Spectacular formation. This time, I'm actually gonna go Magic Damage. Because that'll help Grama and the Dark Urge. Except it doesn't matter, because Grama's doing zero damage? Oh, that's right. She's not the. She's not the one. Forgot the rules on this one. She should still do her her bud based dot, which is what which is what matters. Oh what? Tempted four fifty. Oh, we'll see. Like, do I pop a fifteen minute one as well? I don't think that, I don't think I need to. But I could be wrong. Fast transition. What do we get? Uh, ultimate cooldown. That's not what I wanted. I wanted the speed item. I wanted the speed item. That's why I'm immediately diving into tier two of Diana. Is because look, we got three chests available here, and guess what? There's three more blues to be had. So we may as well full blue her. Crazy. And, uh, you know, take what we can get. Exactly, Conspicuous Compiler. More like Ultimate Letdown. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, once Diana reaches 21 Electrum Chests, is that all she gets forever? No, every two days you add one to that total, that max total. Uh, and that's that's from the moment she was released in the game, not the moment you unlock her. So uh, future players, you know, a long time from now, will have a like you might come into the game and start uh, and you have a hundred electrum chests you could scavenge. But once you get that first initial burst at large amount, then it's just one every two days. Seven every two weeks. Yeah. Increasing the find percent would be kind of pointless. So yeah, it's the it's the number you can get. I want to see how far we get in the first 15 minutes of this potion. Oh, 
we get like a hundred levels, then I think we'll be fine. If we don't, I'll pop a 15 minute potion. Yeah, I'd read. Yeah, at least they have break timer. That's what I told you. It just does its thing when it's gonna do it. At least you get to see how off it is, just like I do. Just like I do. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do on my uh, main account. I finished uh, Grama and Diana's stuff, and I have to, I have to unlock a Flex Champion. I haven't decided who I'm going to unlock over there yet. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I use Crattle, but I don't use Crattle that much. That's the weird thing. I don't know... Uh, Like whose buffs I would want. Maybe Jahira. Should probably do Jahira. Because I do want to test that will thing out at some point. Nornum get. Oh, there's a toolbox. Motor on core toolbox. I don't have anything to level up though, unfortunately. Yeah, I just don't I don't I don't use a lot of these champions for pushing. 
So probably Jahira, and I'm going to have four flex slots, so I don't know. I don't know. It would be... I'd have more reason to choose someone if if they had, like, a, you know, the tier three and four rewards that, that I might be interested in. But they don't currently, so... If I don't, you know, I don't care about them as much. Well, I'm already full epic on everything, so... Yeah, last last event it was like there's too many good choices, and this event it's like, well, I could take them or leave them. I could take them or leave them. And like the first event, it was like, oh, Briv, there's other champions. <laughs> what what other champions? Okay, we're fine with this hour potion. We're over 100 areas in. It's only 10 minutes, so... That means we could te technically go 600 areas? Did I do that math right? Yeah, 100 areas every 10 minutes. 600 areas with one of these now. Ooh, okay, we're definitely going a lot faster than we used to go. Because it was about 400 before. We're going to have to figure out that area. Well, when we just did a 15-minute one, it was a little over 100 areas. But at a slower, at a slower pace, that's why. Yeah. All right, so a truly efficient hour-long potion is now somewhere in the 600s. But that's still kind of the go-to for anything 400 and above, because... I don't want to run four. I don't have. I don't have enough medium potions to go. Well, this is just four mediums. Lucky Rider, you didn't just throw each of the variants into a background party like some people did. That was smart. The people that did that. That was smart. Yeah, the speed increase is better with Laura. It's just, I'm just trying to think about how many levels, how many areas each potion gets me. It wasn't so much doing the variants in the background. It was that they realized I don't have time uh, to do these before the event ends. So I'm just going to start them in a background party because unlike with time gates, an event run doesn't end until you end it. Um, so they can just work on those in their background party. Like they can just switch to that party at some point and then try to do it. Uh, super smart, as long as you started it before the event ended. Uh, problem is, you only get three, so you could put all three, like, tier four ones in there. You better finish them before the next event comes around, because then you might have some more to throw back there, right? 
But you can do that with basically one champion per event. Or if you get down to, like, it's just the 1600s for each of them, yeah. Yeah, that was a neat idea to not think about. Did not think about that with this new event structure. Hey, it's a poop covered log. That's great. So based on this math, it's it's going to take 400 with a with a large speed potion running. It should take 40 minutes to do 400 areas, right? With, we'll probably be around 35, 30 to 35 minutes. That's not bad. Yeah, Lurking Rider. I just, on my main account, I, there is this feeling that it's like, okay, so I got it to tier four, and I completed everything for, like, these four other flex champs. And, but I just sit there going, so? Like, <laughs> like I just, it feels a little weird. Like, yeah, I marked it off a to-do list. But I don't know that it got me anything, right? Um... Like, whereas at least with the feature champions, I'm getting like a permanent, I'm getting like a pair of permanent rewards that I can't get in, you know, like generally, you know, harder to get or, you know, you don't get tons of something. So I do hope that, you know, as they're working now that they've kind of, they've, they've freed up more development time right and more coding time because they stopped supporting switch and they're not doing 17 events a year they're not doing seasons either i'm really hoping that they kind of just sit down and knock out what all the rewards are for for event champions i know there's a lot of i know there's a lot of event champions in the game believe me i know there's a lot of event champions in the game there's what, uh, six years of 16 or 17 uh, plus this year seven. There's over 100 of them, right? That they'd have to do. But, but I feel like that's a list you could look at. and I mean, you could at least fill in like, okay, who's getting like consumables who's getting these support pigments who's getting what what pigment are people getting because that's kind of what they've been running one of them with right is pigments or something for the most part i think that's a good idea and then a feat let's come and look look at their feats list let's come up with a new neat feat for each of them that might take a little longer but and their their argument was well we don't want to make like a feat for them and then rework them and then have to change what we made. And it's like, uh, you're not going to be able to rework a hundred event champions anytime soon. That's, that's eight years, <laughs> eight years. Uh, stop it. Stop it. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't take eight years to... to... Damn. Anyway.
Yeah, fine tune what's in the game for a while. Yeah, well, but I mean, we're getting the bench builder. Apparently, that's coming in soon. Or soon ish. Uh, that's new. They said the alchemy system is either, you know, they hope it could, it'll show up this year, but it might be next year, which tells you it's not. I mean, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what they got. Well, I mean, kind of know what some of the things they're working on are. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. So it sounds like lots of quality of life. It sounds like lots of quality of life stuff. But see, I don't know where is like if, if the alchemy system is next year, if the bench builder is now or soon, and the alchemy system is maybe end of year or beginning of next year, when's time gates 3.0? Is that the thing that's pushing the alchemy system back? I wouldn't hate that. I'd just like to know, right? I'd just like to know. Oh, I can stop leveling up. Click the image. Oh, um, anyway. We can keep going a little further, but it's fine. I would like a, a bit of a rough timeline. I would like it if they posted it, like, kind of a rough timeline. Like, just like, hey... We're in Q2... Uh, you know, scheduled to be completed and completed in Q2 is the bench builder. Q3, we'd love to get Time Gates 3.0. Q4, we'd love to have Alchemy. Please understand, these systems might get delayed. But they're, I don't know, they're, they're real gun shy about that. What they can tell you in a roadmap, uh, since you see, yeah, when did we do that roadmap show? It was a while back. Um, what they can do do is tell you, uh, like, what champions are on, on the roadmap. That roadmap is pretty solid, but that, but they don't like to do. They did that. Dupuy did that during a promotion, and I think that was the fall, like a fall promotion, maybe for. The epic. It was for epic. I think they were on an epic, the epic stream, and they did that promotion. So, will this game have a 15 year lifespan? I mean, it's already seven years, and they, well, who knows? It could, could, keep, could keep going for another seven years. Ooh. Well, you know, Star Citizen is is Star Citizen. Don't I? I don't even want to get started on Star Citizen. I don't even want to get started. I did not. I did not back that. But I know lots of people that did, and I don't want to make them feel bad. <laughs> Critical nature of a lot of the discussions on Discord probably discourages them from being forthcoming. But having conversations is what is what you hold up. Like having just consistently open conversations is how you combat a lot of that. Um, the more you the more you talk about your development process in front of your audience, the more they understand it. The more they come to understand it and how and what things can affect it, the more transparent you are about like things that are going to slow things down and, and move things around. They, they learn to get it. If all you do is say, hey, this is if, over and over is say this is when it's releasing and, and then it releases on that day, then you come to expect that. But if if you don't announce anything and it just shows up, then 
you're just kind of putting your head in the sand and ignoring everything and that's that's they tend to just kind of ignore and that's not this is why they're not great with community management um, they do a lot of like community support stuff which is what the streams are they don't really do a lot of community management and hey there's acrobatic excellence for diana They're willing to do a reset. Like, they're not going to reset everything that, that people work for on the game. Um, they've talked about, like, if bench seats get too crowded, and maybe they add a, another bench seat and shuffle and do a shuffle. I think they've talked about that, but no plans for that yet. May 15th was the 2023. Oh, that was way earlier. But it was an epic thing, right? I just remember that I, I could have sworn it was on the epic stream. Like their, their, stream, their Twitch channel. The only game I've ever played where you can actually talk to devs once a week. Right? Um... I mean, I've worked for a lot of game studios, and no. Occasionally, they would do game streams. There's there's one, so there was one uh, studio that I, I had was played their game, and was it was in, like, uh, I guess you could say early access. It was in, like, alpha, but it was, like, a public alpha. Or beta, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Beta. I don't know. Dawngate. Uh, and they basically had, uh, they had their assistant community manager basically streaming the game five days a week and answering questions live in chat. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, that was a very progressive <laughs> thing to do. And this is the next best thing, was when this game came out, it was, hey, you get the Idol Champions dev stream once a week with Dylan. It was great. And now there's even more times a week where you can talk to people that are working with the game. Right now there's, there's a whole streaming schedule. Um, but you can also talk to, you know, two members of the development team, basically, uh, once a week. And that's, yeah, that just doesn't happen very often. I mean, I remember trying to push one uh, game I was working for to try to get them to do a monthly Reddit Q&A, which is way easier to do than a live stream. And they were like, that's way too much work. And I was like, no. I'm like, this other game does this every week. They do a live stream every week and a Reddit Q&A. And they're like, no. You know, there's an inherent value in those things, but not every, not every studio uh, cares about that type of stuff. Dawngate, was that Warhammer? No. Warhammer was Warhammer Online, Age of Reckoning, it was the MMO, and then Warhammer Online, Wrath of Heroes was their arena battler. It was more like uh, Overwatch before Overwatch became Overwatch. Those types of games. But it was three sides. 3v3v3. Three three three. Oh no, well, 6v6v6 six 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 is what I wanted. Uh, but it was three sides comp battling at once. Um, wait, three sides fighting at once, six people on each team. God dang it, Carver, come on. Uh, and then because my fan site was called 6v6v6.com, 
and the tagline was everybody loves a good three-way <laughs> still got shirts for that i think do i wait did i make a shirt i think i might have a shirt for that and i've got and i had uh stickers and i even sent the dev team like custom m&ms with the logo on it <laughs> that like that had that was like the kind of uh bather where you could you could swap your champions out like the characters you were using the heroes what they were um wrath of heroes you could swap them out when you died you could swap to a different one so you could you know change the makeup of the battlefield to counter whatever was whatever was going on and that wasn't a thing man so many people were upset that you could do that why why don't you just stay the same thing all the time well and now that's like a that's a, like kind of just the way they work now and it's like oh you yeah, know but back then everybody complained about it it was fantastic but but people hated that you didn't just main a character everybody wanted to just main one character and use that over and over and over and never adjust Some people like easy mode. Bungie was a very nice, neat take on MOBAs, the whole three different fla three different flashes? I don't know what that means. Things may be overpowered. I don't know what the three different flashes is a reference to. They saw a game and then they canceled it when it was basically complete. Well, they didn't cancel it. Uh, so the game was made by Waystone Games. Waystone Games was a basically like an indie studio inside of EA. Uh, and despite the, you know, the solid response and the fan base and the things that were coming on and, and the way other MOBAs in the space were reacting, like Riot was having to react to this startup MOBA. Uh... Despite all that, EA just looked at it one day and went, you know what? We don't really want to be in the MOBA space. And they shut the project down. Had nothing to do with how good it was, how much they'd spent on I mean, their budget was basically a rounding error compared to most most EA projects. So they didn't, they didn't care. It was rough. Oh, no, they could monetize it just fine. It wasn't. It wasn't about that. It was that, you know what? We don't really, they just literally just, we don't really understand the MOBA space, so, and we don't want to get into a space that we don't really understand, so we're just shutting down this project. It's wrong. I don't know what that three flashes thing. Flash is a summoner spell, and, oh, to jump a short distance, it's considered the strongest ability game. I'm aware of that. I played, I played League of Legends. Uh, yeah, but you didn't necessarily always use that. Um, I don't know. I look. I I played it from day one. I ran a successful fan site for it. I ran uh, like a one v one tournament, PvP tournaments monthly called Best Shaper World. Um, I represented them at PAX. I went to. Went to their like community summit. I you know I know all of the game and and there were at the community summit there were uh, professional League of Legends players there and they were having a blast. Um, and it was there was just con there was just a lot more you could do. It was a lot of neat stuff. Uh, I don't. Know. I think it had been fine. Uh, folks should keep in mind the scene is a relatively small company who are you talking i mean i'm aware of this limited time resources i know how studios work i'm okay with them not having a schedule for anything but here's the thing they do have a schedule they just don't want to talk about it uh, you don't need a public schedule for everything and that's not what we're asking for we're just asking for a general roadmap for major features, and this is something small studios do um, 
nowadays. This is not outside the realm of possibility. Again, I was talking about Warhammer and Wrath, Online Wrath of Heroes at first. We only just came back to Dawngate. Dawngate was shapers. They were, they were shapers. Uh, they were the characters, um, is what they were called, because they could, like, shape power. Uh, you had, like, capture zones, not unlike, like, resource generators. There were two on each side, and you could capture the opponents. You could take them all. Uh, helped you earn like that was your passive part of that was part of your passive income to buy like items and upgrades and things. Um, it had a they had it had two lanes and the resource generators were on the outside and in the middle there was a jungle that went across the whole thing and in the middle there was a boss that spawned it's called the parasite that spawned um, that was the big Thing you would fight over and then there were some you know there were jungle caps and stuff i did a lot of jungling uh wasn't a big fan of the laning but that was just me not wanting to be a, uh i gotta click just on this thing at the right time but there was also a neat stuff about like supports could uh gain passive income you weren't you weren't like gold starved like you are in some games um you could choose different specializations, and one of those specializations was specifically for supports to gain you more passive income, and thus itemize well. Even if just from from your uh, from your farmer doing their farming thing, and or, and from you harassing the opponents, like it was, it had a really cool feel, um, and there was a lot of neat stuff happening in the community. Like emergent gameplay, taking taking champions that were designed to supports, but then turning them into carries. Uh, it, was, it was really cool. Yeah. What is the shirt word on GG2E? Nobody would know what it was. I could probably dig it out and wear it on this stream at some point. I also had a shirt for that, too. Uh, the Shapers Guild, that was my website. Yeah, 352 or 100 off. Oh, no, I was off on my time estimate slowed down as we got up here because we're not killing things instantly. I guess I could fix that with a fire breath potion. Damage still way above what we need, so we're fine for that. <laughs> Got my hopes up. Ugh, oh, neither of them. Neither of them. Let's check these. There's a medium push of speed. Good. And I don't like any of that. There's a medium push of speed. Good. Still no more medium bounty contracts, though. But yeah, I missed on gate. Uh, I preferred I preferred Dawn Gate to League of Legends. The ch the character uh, the characters were super freaking cool. Uh, in fact, we still use some of the VO. I use some of the VO on this stream. Uh, Renzo uh, it, it chimes in when somebody subscribes, uh, and Zalgus chimes in when people use bits. And uh, when people raid, that's the announcer coming in uh, with a statement. Like they had a great VO, like announcer VO, and, and good like shaper v VO. 
It was good. It was good. Had good stuff. They even had like an announce different announcer packs. You could get a different announcer. That was cool. They did a lot of cool stuff. They were experimenting with lots of cool things. Now you're putting all the upgrades up, Briv? I did until he got up to about a 50% jump chance. I got him a little too high. 50% jump chance works to burn off most of the stacks I get, and then I want to get, and then I just wanted to go into Humon to try to get Humon up to faster, reliable speed. Probably, you know, 100% most of the time. If we can, you know, two to three adjacent, 100%, that'd be a good place to to get him. Uh, and then I and then I'll dump into Sentry to get her into a little better space. She's only at she's you know half the time her speed effect is kicking in. We want a little more than that. So just trying to find a good mix of um, you know where can we put our item levels to get a, a good effect off speed. And Briv was already into like the 173s. That's out of his item efficiency for most champions. So we're all, we're not even to a hundred item levels here. So we want to get up to those. Those first hundred item levels are strong. So we want to at least get that onto Human before we look anywhere else. I want to just send Diana. Does she give Electrum chests randomly? She scavenges them. It's it's in her ability. It's right here. She's an Electrum chest scavenger. Uh, one in two hundred chance of, it, of picking one up off a boss. That's what 05 percent means. And she's a speed champion, which is the bigger deal. Hi, she's a speed champion with a really solid speed effect. She also has a mop uh, ability, so she she wants those item levels, and those item levels will be super efficient because they'll be boosting her mop and her speed. How does speed work? It speeds up the transition effect. So the moment you complete your quest, watch this bird, watch it fly. Woo, look at it book. Up until, so the moment you complete the quest, everything that happens in the game between the time you complete that quest and the time the champions get back into their positions over here gets sped up. You can watch it trigger. 3.713 is my normal speed. Now everything just jumped to 6x speed. Now it's back to 3.7. So the whole game speeds up for those moments uh, while you're going from one area to the other. So uh, it can be a pretty quick speed effect. If you're at like a one kill clear in a speed group and then you add Diana, ridiculous. Then you're, not, you're not waiting around. And, and, that's just, and that's just at my level. I only have like 65%. You can get it up to 5x. So instead of just jumping from, well, now we're at 2.4 to... The four, I think we got attacked. Uh, you'd see a 5x jump multiplier. It's, it's wild. Yeah. So if you're at 10x speed, suddenly it jumps to 50x when you're capped. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And she has a fairly low cap. Uh, it's 1501 when it's uh, normally gilded. Uh, it's down into like the 600s when it's golden. And they and they released a golden for her for the, with the weekend chests. With the weekend chests. They also have a golden out. It's the rot it's a rotating uh, item offer in this part. 
in the event thing that is her uh, is her mop item. Her mop item. Which is her second set of specializations. It's this one. Ensemble cast and spotlight episode. So slot two and slot four. Those are gilding priorities. Did I put that? Did I put that in the guide? Oh no. Where's my Diana guy? Oh, two. Slot four. I did. I did. Okay. I did. Did. I did. Thought I taught a putty tat. I did. I did. We pitched a mop familiar at? I don't think so. I don't think Dave and Justin would get it or care. <laughs> either either one. Mop is a player created term. I mean I I literally came up with that. I don't think they I don't think they'd care. If they ever ask me for a charity familiar, maybe I'll maybe I'll say, yeah, let's make a mop. I probably won't. I probably won't though. Charity familiar would probably be like Sortal. Right? I'd rather have Sortal in the game than a mop. So. Almost there. Took a little longer than I expected. I forgot this. I forgot you gotta you lose a lot of speed once you can't click kill everything, and that's when you gotta throw on a fire breath potion. Well, I totally didn't. So this took longer than it had to, but oh well. Oh well. Next most difficult 